Hello, my name is Andrew. I'm an Adobe Certified Training Provider, have 13 different ACE certifications, and helped found the InDesign User Group in 2001. I train and consult with a wide range of customers, from Adobe to Zippo. But I do more than that. I help with the long-term development of software and keep a working archive of technology. Knowing our history helps us build our future better. That's why David has asked me to give this demonstration. We celebrate InDesign's 20th anniversary this year. Let's take a look at version 1, released in 1999. It's a bit sparse, and designers who tried in Design 1 didn't like it that much. The panels you see are all the panels that version 1 had. The menus are limited, and some menus are missing altogether. There's no support for tables or type on a path. There's also no support for transparency and special effects. We have a basic rule of thumb in software development. Version 1 exists, version 2 has features, version 3 is stable. This is a typical first version release. It exists in basic form, but little else. However, InDesign 1 has four important foundational features that are easily overlooked. Without them, many of the features that you take for granted today just wouldn't be possible. First, InDesign 1 is modular. The application kernel, only 1.8 megabytes, is like the conductor of an orchestra. Everything else is a plugin, like the musicians of that orchestra. For example, here are the plugins for the character and paragraph panels. Want to improve a feature? Simply update the plugin. Need a new feature? Add a new plugin. Need a feature that's not part of InDesign? Use a third party plugin. That means InDesign can be easily improved and extended. Second, InDesign 1 has a PostScript native layout architecture. The PostScript standards are everywhere, in our fonts, in our printers, and in our file formats. EPS and PDF are based on PostScript, so is Illustrator. Before InDesign 1, page layout was more difficult. Notice how bad things look on screen, especially when we zoom in. But InDesign was accurate and reliable. What you see is genuinely what you get. We have the accuracy of PostScript to a thousandth of a point, a thousandth of a degree, and a thousandth of an M. We can zoom in to 4,000%, and it'll print two. Third, InDesign 1 uses a single universal frame for all types of content. Because InDesign knows PostScript, every frame is simply a vector path. That means a frame in InDesign is the same as a shape in Illustrator. And if we want to adjust the shape of the frame, that's easy. Here's some vector art copied from Illustrator into InDesign. We can put anything in it. InDesign 1 supported three types of content, text, graphics, and other InDesign objects. Later versions added support for video, audio, interactive content, and even other InDesign files. As long as InDesign supports it, we can use it. Fourth, InDesign 1 supports the Unicode and OpenType standards. Unicode is a system for identifying every unique character in every language in the world. Also emojis. OpenType is a font format that supports multiple languages and special typographic features. Here's a Unicode text file with Hawaiian, Greek, Russian, and Navajo, four languages using three different alphabet systems. Let's copy this text into InDesign and format it with an OpenType font like my friend Robert's Garamond Premier. Everything just works. That's why InDesign is the standard for international publishing. If InDesign 1 was sparse, InDesign 2 was sophisticated. It added many features that we take for granted today. And if our InDesign 1 layout was simple, this InDesign 2 layout is complex. It uses working Photoshop and Illustrator files. We can adjust the transparency and blending mode of any object. We can feather anything or add a drop shadow, and it'll print. InDesign 2 had improved OpenType support. It added support for tables and it added long document features like books, tables of contents, indices, hyperlinks, and XML. And you could switch between normal and preview modes. Version 2 helped make InDesign the publishing industry standard for page layout. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact me.